Hello everyone, my name is Corazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. We are back in the world, and wow, it is sunny. At the start of an episode, two days in a row. That is, like, unheard of, let me tell you. But we are a couple days, like a day and a half, I think, after the end of last episode, where we built these greenhouses that will eventually be part of our main house. They'll become part of the Hobbit Hill. And they'll be disguised so that you'll only be able to see them if you are in them or above them. We planted some flax in here. And I did come through and I put down some shirt where I could. However, because these guys were in the way of aiming at the blocks here, I couldn't fill in these specifically inside this room with some extra shirt to cover up those little gaps. But after the episode, I also came through and I planted some cabbage and some rye and over here we have some parsnips not enough to fill the whole greenhouse but it'll be a start anyway i was over here at our animals the other night in game just calling our chickens and what do you call a chicken anything but late for dinner and i noticed something rather fortuitous about our sheep please pardon the really loudly squealing pigs. But we have several sheep who are lactating for a number of days. Do you all mind? Good grief. Oh, yep, and there's a daddy sheep. Sorry, daddy sheep. However, about three of them say that they can be milked. Now we have a generation zero here still, which I cannot believe we still have a generation zero, but oh well. And we have a couple Generation 1s, I think, who are able to be milked somewhere in here. But I got excited thinking that maybe we could get some milk and start getting into dairy this episode. Pigs, you know, you. this is not for you. Oh my goodness, it's a lot of pigs. Anyway. Now we have only a Generation 0 and Generation 1 who are ready for milking, looks like. Oh, there we do. We do have three. Okay. Now, the sheep who are Generation Zero, they will become aggressive, and there's a pretty good chance that they won't give you milk. You'll have to try again. And there's sort of a weird tick they have that can be an indicator that you're not going to get milk. But you can try again as soon as they calm down. So let's try this. Nope. So if they make that little sort of whinnying sound... Yeah, there we go. They're too stressed to milk now. So if we try it on... This one. Nope. Let's try it on you. Oh my goodness. Would you two mind? <laughs> Let's try you. And looks like that's not going to work out so well for us today. Well, we'll come back in a bit. And you guys, oh my goodness. It's so loud. Well, no milk for us today. We'll come back in a little bit once they've calmed down. For the Generation Zeros, that can take a little while. But if we're getting into milk, we might also need to get into salt. Because milk is fine on its own. But if we come in here to the handbook, it might show us milk portion. It only lasts for four days. So in a proper barrel in a cellar, it might last for about two weeks at most. In order to process milk into something a little more shelf-stable, aka cheese, we need salt. And we need a lot of it. Luckily, when you find salt, you do get a lot of it. And so I think today we are going to head out on a bit of an adventure. We have a couple reads on where some salt might be. Let's see, I believe it was up here. Yes, here we have... Very poor halite at 6.4%. And it decreasing that direction. So we could look around here and see if we find some. And I think that we also found some down here. Was it down here? Ah, here we go. 13.5, 17.7. Yes, so this might be the place to go for salt. Now, you should know that today's episode could be a complete fool's errand. 
because salt, or halite, it spawns in these gigantic pillars that span, or that rise from the very bottom of the world, down just above the mantle, all the way to the first transition between igneous and sedimentary rock. And they spawn in usually between 10 and 30 or 10 and 25 diameter pillars. However, these salt pillars only form one third of the time that they are supposed to. So even if a chunk said 100% halite, you would only have a 33% chance of actually finding any. So we're going to prep for a pretty long, hefty exploration. We should also prep for general adventure. I think we're going to probably just do some spelunking once we find a likely place for halite. We could also get into alternative methods for finding halite, which is, rather than spelunking, well, digging your own caves. It's not as glamorous. It does not work great. It is a complete waste of pickaxe durability, but it is an option. And sometimes it may be your only option. So I'm probably going to go milk the sheep one more time, give it a whirl, see if we get any milk out of it. And then we're going to get our adventuring boots on and head out in the morning. Uh -huh, but before we do that, I should note, while we're milking them, that sheep only lactate for 20 days after giving birth. And in order to milk them, you need to right-click them and hold with a bucket. And if your, if your bucket gets pulled away like that, you want to try to let go as fast as possible because sometimes you can avoid making them aggressive. <gasps> we got a pail of milk. Oh man, it's probably the only milk we'll get for a while at this point. I thought we had, where'd our third one go? Oh, there you are. Nope. That's okay. Well, we have one pail of milk. So for now, the only thing we can do with it... Hello, butterfly. Hold your horses. Hold, hold up. It is like one degree out and there are butterflies. Hold, uh, the, what? Oh my goodness. Emergency meeting, guys. Emergency meeting. We have butterflies on the horizon. Butterfly net, come with me. Where did they go? They were right around here somewhere. There's one flitting. I saw it twinkle on by. There's one. There's two. Oh my goodness. Can I get you? Get you? Get you? Yep. No, apparently not. They are apparently a little skittish. Huh? We got one. Check it out. A comma. So, like I mentioned in the episode when we first talked about butterflies, they do die when you catch them, and there is no way to preserve them, unfortunately. Well, preserve their life, at least. But yeah, cool. Huh, that's cute. I mean, terrible that we're killing them. There were a few more out here. Let's see if we can rustle them up. <laughs> There's one. Come here. <gasps> gotcha, we got two. Oh, we have two butterflies, guys. I hate to say it. I hate to say it. I should love to say it. We have butterflies. There's one. Oh, come here, you. Get, 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 get. Gotcha. Three commas. All right. Oop. I thought I saw the shadow of one. <gasps> I think I did. Yes. Yes, there you are. Oh, come back here. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Dip, dip. Ah, gotcha. There we go. So they're all the same kind so far. And what are you? <gasps> you're different. No, you're not. You're the same. I guess that's all that is spawning right now. What are you? Common butterfly? No, you're different, I think. Yes, what are you? An eastern comma. Oh. Another one? Another one? What have we got? Back here. Here you are. Come back here. Gotcha. Another comma. And now we're in, like, wolf territory. Wasn't there a hole over here that I almost fell into? Yep. That, that could have been rough. <laughs> I see that chasing butterflies is going to be the death of me at some point. Oh well, hashtag worth it. I wonder if there are different butterflies that appear based on a region and or time of the year too. So two Eastern commas and nine commas. That's probably good for now. 
But you know what? Let's bring our net with us in case we run across any more. And it looks like, although it says it has 200 durability, using it to catch butterflies doesn't consume durability, at least currently. So cool. Good to know. Now let's put our Grim collection in here. We will fill this up with more butterflies later, like more varieties. But for now, let's just get some color in this room. Let's get you guys, we'll put you over here. But yeah, and Bert got stuck somehow. Uh, you just, you can wait there, it's fine. Don't need you. At least he's not like wandering like crazy anymore. I do think it'd be nice if we could have like an angled display case where these would be angled up at a 45 degree angle so you can walk by from like here and see them without having to get up close and like on top of them to get a good view. But other than that, I think these are pretty darn cool. Oh yeah, weren't we talking about milk and salt? So milk, what can we do with you? Well, right now, all we can really do at the moment is we can drink it. Now we could, if we wanted to, come down here and put it into a barrel. And yes, it'll last for 20 days in a barrel. And that will usually give you enough time, even if you only have a couple sheep, to milk them over the course of a few days, fill up your barrel, and start your cheese making process. Because you do want to start your cheese with a full 50 liter barrel. You can do 25, but it must be 25 or 50. And since buckets hold volume in multiples of 10, it's just easier to do a full barrel. I'm gonna get milking, get some rest, and then in the morning, we'll be off. All right, folks, it is morning, and I have gone to try to milk the sheep a couple more times. The one sheep that we did milk is not ready yet. You can only milk them once every 24 hours, and it is a pretty exact clock. The other two were, again, too wild and were too stressed to milk, so we still have just 10 liters of milk, which feels like a lot to get from one sheep, but whatever. Now, our first leg of this mission is going to be up here. We are going to prospect in a bit of a ring around here and probably go out at least two more. Like, I'm going to step over a chunk and go to the next one. And will probably do that in a bit of a ring around here and just see what kind of halite readings we get. Because if they don't go above 10 per meal or so, then you really don't want to bother looking. There could still be halite there. I keep saying halite or halite and switching the two, but that's okay. But yes, there could still be halite up there, but it's just really unlikely. So, so you want to pretty much only look for halite when you have at least like a 30% or 30 per meal on the readout because that means that it has roughly a 10% chance or 10 per meal chance of spawning somewhere. And we are traveling pretty light because we are not going that far and because we already have a bed up here. So I figured we didn't need to bring an extra one with us. Hey, copper, neat. Now, why did the chicken cross the lake? Hmm. Now we're about here, but since we have a halite reading down, oh, we don't have one down here. It's only up here. Okay. That means it's probably not going to be south of this place. Oops. Are we wet? Uh, we're slightly wet. Okay. So yeah, it's not likely to be south of this spot. So let's start... Oh, hello. Let's start by going north a couple chunks. And we'll take a reading there. We're going to go... My goodness. We're going to go right up here, I think, to... The approximate center of this chunk. I think we're at the right spot. And let's get our shovel out. Keep our butterfly net on us in case it gets warmer. And let's start taking some readings. You know, let's just hop down and do it here. Twenty per meal halite. Hey, check that out. That's not too bad. So let's move. Let's go two more chunks north, and well, if we can, and let's see if it gets even better up here. For instance, still twenty point nine. Also poor. Okay. So that could mean that we've skipped over a higher readout, or that. It's a bit farther north. Let's go one more chunk 
and see if that reading changes up here at all. And a 12. Okay, so we don't want to go up. Let's go down here then. 25.2. Wow. Okay. I'm digging it. Literally. Let's go one chunk left and right just to see if it gets even higher over one of these places. But I kind of doubt that it will. 25.1 still. Okay. So it's the same. Dropping to 19 here. Okay. So it looks like these two chunks right in here are going to be our best bet for finding salt. So let's see if we can find a nearby cave that we can drop into and see if it goes deep enough. And if it doesn't, we might just have to make our own. I hear creepy crawlies. I think we're pretty close to where they are. Let's try digging down a little bit. Yeah, they feel like they're right in front of us here. Let's dig a bit of a staircase. Let's see if we can find them, because that might lead us to a cave. Ooh. Well, there's our cave. Let's drop a rope ladder. What y'all doing? We're going to get our adventuring gear ready here. Our killing gear. These are just service drifters, but still. Come on, guys. Four hits. Okay. We have some deep pits here. Now what I want to avoid is we don't want to go too deep. Again, we are just wearing gambeson armor. So we do have a nice shield. But we do need to go deep. Deep enough. So that we can find a spot where the igneous rock meets up with the sedimentary rock. So let's see how far down we can get here. Oh my. Well, that goes decently deep. And I think we can parkour our way up here for the most part. Get. Let's just drop a few ladders here. And we will pull them up behind us when we go. There's a shelf over there. I don't like that too terribly much. Oh my. Oh, it's Galena Galore, though. Ow. Hey. Excuse you. No, no thank you. Oh, deep ones now. Come on, buddy. Okay, bye. I don't want to see you anyway. I'm going to dig this out just so it's a bit less precarious. Oh. Uh, I'm going to place some blocks down to make this a wee bit safer. Or at least somewhat less deadly. Now we're not seeing any igneous rock here yet. I'm just going to mark this as searched. That goes up and out. Hello, my dude. Hey, more lead. Not bad. So I guess we did have a cave up here we could have come down, but I didn't see that earlier, so that's all right. And we've already been there. Now we have this area here. Oh, my. Hey, excuse you. I'm trying to look here. I'm just window shopping at the moment. Don't rush me. Oh, my goodness. No, thank you. I am not in the mood for Girl Scout cookies. Alright, hey, we have a gear. I'll take that. Plenty of slate here. And a dead end. So we will just mark that off. Uh, oh, another gear. Don't mind if I do. Ooh, wow. Some bismuth. Hey, and there's our granite. So, if we go down just a little bit more here, we might, if we're very lucky... Ooh, my. Oh, my. Um, no thank you. Drop a couple of these here, just... 
And this goes up, not down, so we don't want to go this way. This is a very ore-rich place, so that's great. I'm probably going to call it once we start seeing the tainted drifters, because then we're going to see some corrupted for stew since they spawn at the same heights. Would you please stand still so I can kill you? Ah, this just folds around. Ah, rats. Well, there is one thing we can do, and it's not likely, but on the very, very off chance that there is halite, like, just on the other side of this wall, we can try a node search. Now, you're not going to find halite on the node search. Bismuth. Nope, nothing there. Because halite is just a regular stone, so you're not going to find it on the node search. Node search only finds ores. However, inside halite, there can be what's called sylvite, which can be processed into potash and spread in your fields. So unfortunately, it looks like this place is a bit of a dead end. That's too bad. But to be expected, there is a very low chance of you ever finding halite on your first try anyway. So I'm going to pack up here. I'm going to bring our torches with us as many as I can get. I'm going to pack a bigger pack to bring with us. And we're going to head down to that desert and see if there's anything that we can dig up there. Because I think this is probably about the end of the places we can search here. Unless there's another... Tell you what, let's take a quick... Oop. Let's take a real quick peek here. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Nope, it does not. So, I'll pack up and I'll see all of you as we are heading out to head south and then up to the desert that is north of our transicator down there. All right, folks, we are back and I have prepared us a little better for the journey. We have a bit more food on us. We have three more serpents of food on top of a fired crock. And we have a bed with us so we can catch a few Z's while we are out and about. Ooh, I hear the sound of rain. That's promising. But let's get going through our transicator and head to the south so we can go north. And I will meet all of you when we are up down here. When we're up down, we're going to go and visit this trader right here. So I'll meet all of you once we arrive. All right, folks, we are here, and it looks like we have some caves that might be worth exploring here. Or is this just that thing that wraps around? It might just wrap around. Still, we have a good place to start digging through some shallow sand, and hopefully finding some better halite. We have a friend who lives here. Hello, friend. May I sleep in your bed, Vlad? <laughs> And buy some crazy expensive doors here, one or two. But we don't. Sorry, buddy. All right, we're here, and in the morning, we are going to set out on another prospecting journey, followed by, hopefully, a short underground adventure where we're going to find tons and tons of salt. Right? Right. Nod your head. Very good. All right, good morning, everybody, and good morning, Vlad. Thanks for letting me rest my head. So we need to get started with prospecting here. So we're going to get our shovel out and our prospecting pick. And we are going to go, let's see, you are 13.5, you're 17.7. Let's go a little bit north of you and see what we get. 19.5, okay. Moving up in the world. Let's head up. A little farther. So we're down by a lot to 8.1. Okay. Let's maybe move back to here. So we have 17 down there and 19 up there. So let's just try right here. Still 19. Okay. So this could be the highest that's in the area or 
could pick a different direction and we'll go two chunks and we'll see how it looks. Still in the 19s, okay. It's a little higher, not much higher. So I'm going to do some more prospecting and I'll bring all of you back once I have a decent-ish map of the area so that we can talk about where we should possibly adventure down, like down there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'll see all of you in a little bit. Hey everyone, stand still. Don't get too excited, but check out the butterflies. They are everywhere and they're stuck in the water. So, so, oh, come on. Get back here. Get back here. The same one we had before. Come on. Oh. Come on. Get, get you. Gotcha. There's a bunch of them over here. I sneak. Will they spook? Let's find out. <gasps> get back here. You. Oh, there's a whole bunch of you. Get back here. No. Oh. No. Did I get you? I got you. Got. Get. These are elusive. Come back here. <gasps> got you. You're mine. More that are stuck in the water? Yes, please. There's one. Gotcha. Ha <laughs> ha. That's right. Fall into the water and become mine. All right, another one. I think they just keep spawning as you capture them, which is kind of weird, but hey, I'll take it. All right, what have we got here? We have, ooh, we have a bunch of them. Dead small whites, large whites, some dead large blues females, and some dead small male coppers. Neat, 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 neat. These will fill out our collection. All right, distraction over. Let's get back to prospecting. Sad face. Oh, more butterflies. Okay, folks, we are back. And it has been a day. And I have gotten a good bit of prospecting done and... What? Distracted? Distracted, you say? You accuse me of getting distracted by butterflies? No, 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 no. I assure you, I assure you, I would never do that. I don't know what you mean at all. I've been... See, look, I've been digging. Look at these holes that I dug here. And then patched back up rather clumsily. I would not ever get distracted by hunting for butterfly. Are oh, these? Uh, 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 oh, sorry, I have, I have no idea how this got here. This is <laughs> now my 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 friend must be playing a trick on me. Uh, they must have just stuck these in my pockets, and I didn't notice. Yeah. Um, no, nope, nope, no distractions here. But uh, I did learn. I did learn one small thing while I spent uh, ten seconds hunting butterflies. Just yep, ten seconds. Mm -hmm is that they are, well, one, they're skittish, but they're also stupid. There's one down there. So if we just sneak right up to it with a butterfly net in hand, we can sneaky our way right into the butterfly's face, and it will not fly away as long as we don't spook it. We can even smack the grass that it's sitting in and smack the butterfly. It doesn't care. And boop, it's ours now. I think that was one of these three. Not sure which one. But uh, yeah, pretty simple, actually. Not uh, not too bad at all. And they tend to just sit in the grass unless you get close. Then they start fluttering around and flying away. Boop. So, prospecting. Changing gears here into the prospecting pick. As you can see, I have hit several of these in a line here because I noticed that there's basically a sort of a line of 19% right across here, or 19, almost 20%. It's the highest right here, but it actually continues the whole way down to here and even goes to 18.2. So this is a really interesting, kind of an oblong area. I've kind of dug a little bit around north and south of it. It does drop pretty immediately. There's a bit of a hot spot down in here still looks like, but it does drop to 13 farther down here. And yeah, so I think we should just pick a cave, any cave. There are a couple I found. There's one, let's see, right over here. And I know we've been in here before. I just don't recall if there was anything to explore or if it was just a loop around. And I also found a couple up in this direction. 
Let's see, there's one here that goes two directions. One down there and one down there. And I think there was one... Is there another one over here somewhere? Ah, here we go. Yes, down here. So, I'm not going to walk on that. Looks a little bit dangerous, but... Uh, yes, I think we can... Oh! Oh! That was indeed dangerous. Let's, um... Wow. We're going to run back to our trader friend and um, not do that again, I think. So we have a couple caves here, and I think there's one beyond the trader in Yon Hills over there. But I'm going to get something to eat, make it morning, and then we're going to spelunk in these caves a little bit. I didn't bring enough food for, like, multiple days of adventuring, but I brought enough for maybe one or two. I'll see all of you in the morning. All right, everyone, we are back. Ooh, it's a yucky morning. And I have stowed most of the evidence, I mean butterflies, in my extra basket on my back. So they are out of our inventory for the time being. And I think it's time for us to get a move on. Let's take a quick dive down here. I'm pretty sure this just cuts through. I don't think this goes anywhere. Yeah, okay. So... I really doubt you'll find anything of great import down here. Yeah. And we're probably too close to the surface to even detect the silhouette that Highlight might have, if it has it. It's never a guarantee. Anyway, let's get moving to one of these caves, probably the nearest one first. And let's see what we can find inside. I did spend part of the night scouring the map here and looking around for... If we were super duper duper lucky, kind of like we got in the first season actually, although I didn't notice it till after, if Halite spawns in such a way that it's down a shaft, then you might see a little pink splotch kind of mixed in with the rest of your stone. And I thought this might be some, but that's probably just gravel. But let's go check it out real quick anyway, because it's like right there. So let's go and just make sure we didn't get like stupid lucky. But I'm pretty sure it's too close to the surface here to show up anyway. Because again, it always ends just above the top of the igneous layer and only juts into the sedimentary layer a little bit. And yes, yeah, so we just have some gravel here just on the north side. So the map renderer makes it a little pink. Claystone gravel. Okay. Now, if it had spawned, like, right here along one of these edges, it would have a much greater chance of showing up on the surface. I'm not sure how often that ever happens. That must be a really lucky rare event, I would guess. Anyway, let's go to... There's a cave. One of them was right down here, right? Somewhere here. Ah, well, you know, we're right here. Let's just pop down here, since we're already here. And let's take a gander, and hopefully we won't fall this time. So what do we have? We have lead. I might want some of you. We have a really funky little place here. We have a lot of sand too. Great. So I'm going to call this part not a cave. Where do you go? Nowhere. Um, you know what? Let's grab the lead while we're... No, we're here for halite and other stuff. I don't want to get too caught up in lead, because we have a ton of lead at home already, so I'm not short on lead. And I think sometimes you get drifters that blink in the light, okay. But sometimes you can end up with really funny shaped pillars, because they spawn right at the edge of some upheaval here. Uh, but that doesn't seem to be the case here. We do, however, have friends. That was efficient. Also not a cave, okay. This just goes... Ooh, ooh. Ooh, zinc. Okay, you know what? I'm going to retract what I said. I'm going to spend a moment here, and I'm just going to grab this zinc because we are very, very low on zinc at home. So pardon me while I take a quick break here. And yes, we are going to mine out this zinc. All right, I'll take it. That is... Where'd you go? There you are. Cool. Not a huge haul, but it will shore up our lagging zinc reserves. So this is not a cave. We're not going to really find any salt here or halite. So let's pop back out 
Parkour. Per oh, oh, parkour fail. And I think the other cave should be like up there somewhere. Hey, here we go. All right. So do we have a way up and down here? Nope. Now we do. You're not floating, but you are. Let's fix that. Uh, let's do... Let's do the shallower one first. Shallow just because of the angle. And shallow because it doesn't go very deep, apparently. Alright. Do we have any gold or silver in this vein of quartz? No. Okay, we're going to leave that alone. I will probably... Eh, I'll just mark this off. We have been here. Boop. And then let's head down in this direction. Eh, much... Yeah, that's deeper. All right. And, ooh, I don't like that sand. Let's, um... Let's make this fall. Geronimo! That's better. Okay. And looks like we can parkour our way up, so I won't set any ladders down. I will, however, start dropping torches... As we get in here. And we have a down. We have a down. Ooh, what are you? <gasps> no. No. No, no. Wow, okay. I was... That is really high up. That's really high up. Why are you so high up here? Like... What is down here? Uh, drifters. Of course there are. Ugh. Okay, fine. Fine, fine, fine. Guys, come on. Well, okay, so I guess there is some... Paradoite this high up, but man. That's... That's really stupid, Lucky. That is stupid. I'll take it, but it's stupid. <laughs> okay, well, so everyone... Allow me to introduce you to Halite. It is a pale pink rock, very heavily textured and speckled. And the very first thing you want to do is mark the heck out of it. Let's just do this. So, yeah, this is going to be our forever salt, apparently. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to block this off just to keep things from trying to crawl up behind us. I could almost just dig to the surface. And you know what? Let's do it. Let's just dig to the surface and call it a day. Oop, that spooked me a little bit. And here we are at the surface. Holy moly. We were catching butterflies right here. Like this one. I'm going to catch right now. I want another green one. Yeah. Distractions, distractions. Watch one over there. Oh, put it away. Put it away, Corazar. Put it away. But yes, wow. So, Halite, um, what you do from here is pretty simple. Uh, you mine it out. There's not much else to say. This does not generate salt when you mine it. In fact, you can actually quarry it, too, if you want, because you can turn it into a, I mean, decent pink block. It won't polish into anything. You can't make bricks out of it or anything. It's too soft. But... There you go. This is all you can do. You can turn it into halite stone and grind that into salt and then use that for lots of different things like preserving meat and making brine or cottage cheese. I'm going to just start mining out some halite and we'll bring it with us. I'm going to probably fill up as much inventory as I can with the halite because I want to make as few trips here as we ever need to because it's just annoying. But wow, that was... Ooh, here we go. Oh, perfect. Perfect, perfect example. This is the sylvite I was mentioning, where if this had been buried in a wall and we were lucky enough to do a node search prospect near it, we could pick this up from, well, eight blocks away. But this is sylvite, and we are going to probably take one home with us as a block, like so. And the rest that we come across, we will just mine into... Well, uh, I guess we're going to drop something here. Goodbye, Clayston Sand. And we got three Sylvite. And you grind those, they can turn into two potash each. And this will permanently increase the 
potassium fertility in soil that you put it on once by 15%. So, yes, powerful, powerful stuff. And boy, am I excited to be here and having found this, this is crazy. Anyway, folks, I'm going to get to it and dig us up some halite. And I think I'll just see all of you once we're home and we're ready to unpack everything and talk about what's next. Alright folks, we are back home safe and sound with our pockets full of halite. Okay, our pockets partly filled with halite. We got a couple other goodies along the way. I mined out an iron meteorite that we had found previously on the way to our destination. And we got a little bit of silite to go with that. So, I think first things first, let's go unload our pockets. We have butterflies galore to deliver into these display cases. And let's start with, say, you. Also, I promise that at some point I will put more than, like, one kind of butterfly in a case. Just that right now we don't really have more than one kind to put in the case. There. I did it. And there we go. That is one task done. Now the next thing, as we traverse our crazy dark hallway because of lighting glitch issues is we need to actually grab our salt back out of here and we are going to run over to our old base hopefully there's some wind and there is not so we're going to go to our old base and we are going to drop half a snack of this halite into our corn and have it turn into ground salt Hey, a dinky redwood tree grew again. Look at that. See, we'll go ahead and drop half a stack in here. That's because this will turn into a full stack of salt, and if we kept grinding, it would throw it out on the floor. And if we weren't around to pick it up, it would just despawn. So, I'm going to go and try to milk our sheep one last time and see if we can get a little bit more milk, but we are still only sitting on 10 liters, so we might just have to work with what we've got. But I'll see all of you in the morning, and then we will get the last part of the salt and milk and maybe the beginning of cheese saga going. But yes, I'll see you all then. Okay, so I missed getting it on camera, but I wanted to just have a chuckle with you at when I opened this gate, all the piglets in here squealed at me and I came up this ladder and I turned and bam, we had pigs growing from piglets right before my eyes. Like pop, they all went to <laughs> straight to adulthood. That's how nature works. In case you were wondering, that's actually how the world works. Hello, chickens. All right, everyone. A good bright morning to you and to us, apparently. Let's go pick up our salt. And I did try to milk the sheep, but they were not cooperating. So we have 10 liters of milk and not a whole lot to do with it. Oh, you're still going. Wow. Apparently, or you've stopped. Nope, you're still going. Okay. I'll give you a second. Hey, there we go. All right, we now have a full stack of salt. And since we don't have much milk, I think we should find something that we can salt with it just for demonstration purposes. Like, I don't know, a pig. Hello, you. Hey, you're even one of the old generations. Nifty. That makes this really easy. Okay, so now that we have our salt and we have some meat and we have some vegetables. Let's say, yeah, you, because you're about to go bad, sort of. We can now look at doing things with salt to preserve our food. So we have milk here that is fresh for 13.3 days. If we come in here and we put, I believe it's one... No, I guess we can't do it with just one set of 10 liters of milk. So this milk is going to get drunk. However, if we come in here and we put two pieces of salt in for every one piece of meat, we can convert this into 
cured red meat, and it will last a very long time. So, you know, let's go ahead and do that. 18 salt and 9 raw red meat, and we will get 9 cured red meat after 20 days of sealing. And coming over here to this barrel, let's get some water, because for vegetables, our bucket is pre-watered, when we preserve them, we don't just dump them in salt, we need to put them in some brine. And brine is basically a very salt, heavy salt water mixture. We'll do 20 liters because we have 21 parsnips. 20 parsnips. And we're going to put, I think, it's going to be 10 pieces of salt. Yes, instantly becomes brine, just like you're doing lime water. And then we can put 20 of these parsnips in. And we will get 20 pickled parsnips after 14 days of sealing. Like so. Now, you should note that your red meat and your pickled vegetables, they will lose some of their nutrition when you take them out of the barrel. The trade-off is that they will then be preserved for a much longer time than they would be just in here in one of these storage vessels. However, if you then use your red meat or poultry in a recipe, I think you do end up getting back that nutrition, but not if you use a pickled vegetable in the recipe. I'm not sure you even can. I'll have to try that. Now, normally, we would be able to put some salt in here and make cottage cheese. However, we cannot. So I'm just going to carry this bucket of milk around and we're going to drink it. Like so. And we now have a tiny little pip of dairy nutrition. This won't carry us far and it won't really do us much good until we actually get into the full swing of cheese making, but I wanted to include this for completeness sake. Ah, oh, nice bright day. Let's do our outro right here in front of the fields that we're gonna plant when the spring thaw is finally done. But I hope you enjoyed this big adventure in milk and salt. And I'm looking forward to being able to actually get into real cheese making, hopefully, this year. I hope you enjoyed the adventure in finding some halite, our two explorations, and then the sudden <laughs> sudden end as we just literally ran right into it at the end there. But that is sometimes how things go in Vintage Story. Anyway, we are getting into spring and we're also starting to get closer to finishing our house, or at least the structure of it. And so we need to start getting our spring things ready and getting our fields planted. And we'll check up on our fruit trees then, too. I hope you're looking forward to that. But as always, my name is Hazen Kurazar. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.